I was looking around on forums and posts and general social media, and a comment that I saw a few times was people asking for the definitive Greek myths. And there's a sort of misunderstanding sometimes that Greek myths often had different versions of them, and the Greeks seem to have been quite happy with that. For example, I'll start with Helen of Troy, that staple myth whereby Helen ending up at Troy caused the Trojan War. But there are actually versions of the myth where Helen didn't go to Troy. Actually, it was a sort of phantom or ghost of her that ended up in Troy. She was in Egypt all along. And then there's Aphrodite, who had two versions of her birth. The nice one and the really unpleasant one. Next up, Oedipus. And don't worry, I'm not going to talk about that. But I am going to say that the version of the myth that you're probably familiar with, which deals with lots of nastiness after the nastiness, that somewhat differs from an earlier version. In Homer's Odyssey, Odysseus visits the underworld and he speaks to Jocasta, Oedipus's mother, and she says that after it all happened and it all came out, he carried on as king. And, you know, that's very different from the later versions of the myth that we have. And last but no means least, we come to Cerberus, probably my favourite. Now, when Cerberus is first mentioned by both Homer and Hesiod, there are slight differences. For example, Homer doesn't name him. Hesiod actually calls him Cerberus. And Hesiod also describes him as having 50 heads. And this varies. For example, Pindar says that he's got 100 heads. And of course, there's the later version of him having three heads. And I often think with the three-headed version, perhaps that was just more popular because... As an artist, you're not really going to be able to do more than three heads on an animal. What I think is that in the modern age, we're much more conditioned for narratives, that is to say myths, to have a consistency about them. So we just have one version and that version is stuck to. And a good example of this will be a franchise or a film that's remade or picks up a beloved character or any character from, say, comic books or anything like that. And if they get one thing wrong or one thing doesn't line up, then there is much gnashing and wailing of teeth on the internet. So perhaps it helps then to remove that expectation when you're reading Greek myth. The idea that there was only ever one version, that one version was well, the one that everyone followed. After all, ancient Greece wasn't a homogenous place. It was full of different people interpreting myth differently and giving their views and perhaps their twists on it. 